Hey everybody, this is Phoenix Down, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. In the last episode, we arrived at Narsh after braving the rapids of the Let River, only to have the guards kick us out at the front gate. One time, you cruise through town in Magitek armor, and then all of a sudden everybody gets up in arms when they see you. I tell you, I don't know what to make of these people. But anyway, as you can tell, we are not presently in Narsh. We are actually in this little forested area, kind of southwestish of uh, where Figaro Castle used to be. Yeah, Figaro Castle is still underground. You can't access that at this point in the game. But I'm here because there is something I would like to show you guys. It's something you can only use, you can only do now when you have Bannon in your party. If you uh, step up from this position I'm in, we will appear in a Chocobo stable. I mentioned this last time after Figaro Castle sank and we were riding those Chocobos. You can find chocobos here, you rent them for like 100 gil, 100 GP. Well, you see, the uh, game developers, they did not intend for Bannon to ever have to ride on a chocobo, so they never designed a, a sprite animation for him while riding. So if you have him at the head of your party during this particular point, and you rent a chocobo, the game does some interesting things as a result. And uh, I should warn you guys that some of the images you might see from this may be considered spoilerish, because it involves a sprite that we have not yet encountered in the game story. So if you're really concerned about that, you've never played this game before, and you, you, you think you'll be able to figure out what it actually is, you may want to close your eyes from like the moment I put money down on the chocobo up until you hear the chocobo theme music on the overworld. After that it's all clear, but that's also pretty interesting. So I'm going to uh, enter the chocobo stable. Yeah, we got the chocobo here. Yeah, if he, he quens or works or whatever, depending on uh, what generation you started Final Fantasy from, I guess. Oh yeah, and you get a tutorial for uh, how to ride chocobos. You know, press the A button or up on the control pad to go forward and use the directional buttons to steer. And the B button will dismount, but when you get off the chocobo, it returns to its pen, so you can't like just leave a chocobo parked someplace and then come back whenever, and it's not like, you know, the black chocobo in Final Fantasy 4 or 5 or anything like that, or Boko in 5 for that matter. So let's rent uh, a chocobo for 100 GP. Alright guys, this is the moment, close your eyes. Well, that is messed up. All right, now it's clear. And what the, what happened to Bannon's head? He's the headless horseman, the headless chocobo rider. Yeah, this is what happens when Bannon uh, rides a chocobo. They totally, uh, they just kind of paste the lower portion of his uh, walking sprite animation on the top of the, on the chocobo's back and cut off his head. So Ichabod Crane, eat your heart out. But all right, now that we've taken care of that, it's a little interesting uh, piece of trivia there, a little little side detail. One of the safer glitches in the game. There are other glitches that I will not be showing off that could potentially harm the game or like max out certain items and stuff like that. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. But alright, now let's. Uh, I'll meet you guys back where we left off last time. Alright, and we're back. As we've established last time, if you try to enter through the front gates of Narsh, the guards will come up here and they will kick you out. And you can do that as many times as you like, but it makes no difference. You can't get in for the front gate. I guess it's preferable to being taken prisoner or killed by them like they were trying to do a Terra in the first place. I guess they figure after we escaped, they must have just thought, oh well, they're out of our hair now, they're not our problem anymore, so it doesn't matter what we do with them. Just keep them out of town and we'll be all good. Well anyway, so now we have to figure out another way to get into town. But before that, I would like to, uh, get over to this uh, recovery spring in the pot, heal up, since we don't have access to an inn or anything. You know, the Let River did kind of wear us down just a little bit. So if we want to get inside, we have to come over here. If you remember the first time we were here, exactly. When Locke first helped me, he fiddled with something right around here. Something. I just noticed that just now. Uh, Woolsey must have uh, put a little typo in there. Knowing him, there's probably some secret switch in this rock wall. It's like if you say so, are you just suggesting that Locke was the one that put that switch in there that opens up this hidden passage into the, the mines of Narsh? 
Yeah, because if you remember when Terra was being rescued, Locke pulled the switch on the inside, but I guess there's one on the outside as well. So I guess there was some foreshadowing involved there. We did have to remember that after all. But yeah, fortunately the guards will not spot us crawling around the outskirts of town here, unlike when uh, Terra was trying to make her escape. And there are no battles on the outside either. But while we're inside the mines, that's another story. There are some new enemies on this screen. Namely these guys, the Wild Rat in first class, and we are stuck in a pincer attack, which is unfortunate. Back rows don't exist in this form. I'm going to use auto crossbow on those. Bannon, you need to heal. Terra, set fire on these two. Yeah, the first class guys, they tend to counterattack with uh, a wrench attack, I believe. They might even self-destruct. I don't re don't quote me on that one because I don't quite remember for sure. But yeah, that that, that hurt a little bit. All right, do health, and they're out of there. All right. I would have preferred uh, an encounter that was just a standard fair fight for other purposes. Not that I ever intend to utilize those. But alright, we're up in this one, and this room is interesting. We have this little shining light here. Remember the path it, fo it uh, takes. Because we will have to follow that path in order to navigate this room safely, as they will soon explain. Goodness, what's that? I think this is a security checkpoint. If we follow the light exactly, we'll probably be okay. If we make a mistake, the light will surround us. To proceed safely, we must tag the glimmering light. You know what? I don't believe that. Let's go this way. What the? But yeah, oops. I, I was going to try to tag that right. But you end up fighting these monsters. There are three different monsters that you encounter if you uh, fail to tag the right thing. The right light. I want to encounter all three of them for completionist sake. I'm not going to take advantage of that down the road, but... You know, if there's a certain character that that might be relevant for in the near future, and Bannon gained a level, and so did Terra. So I am going to... Uh, well, you get sent back to the entrance first. And you have to watch the light again. I'm going to try to get the battle that has all three of the monsters. Even though I don't really plan to take advantage of that, just to show you guys. And then we will continue pressing onward. Fortunately, they don't explain everything to us again. Alright, here we go. Again with the pincer attacks. It only took one extra try to get this to work. But yeah, the specters and I believe it's the dark the dark side and the specters, I believe, are... Uh, are uh, element... Or, ah, crap, I meant to auto... Or not auto-target, but multi-target. They are undead monsters, I mean to say, so uh, healing spells will cause damage. Oh well, that's one Rin out of the picture. It's another one down. You see the dark sides are gradually losing uh, HP, and ow. Now we got the slip touch going there. Alright, Edgar, auto crossbow. Fortunately, you cannot shoot your own party with the auto crossbow. Okay, so Terra's gonna finish off dark side over there. Edgar's gonna take out these guys. Hopefully they both go down. All right. Now let's navigate this cave properly. I'm just thankful it didn't take too many times to uh, find that enemy combination. Although I would have preferred a more conventional alignment. Even a back attack would have been preferable. But all right, let's follow the light. Head into the light. Go. One more step up that way, and we're in the clear. All right, moving onwards. We've seen this chamber before, just from a different perspective. This is the room where uh, Terra fell through the floor over there. I see they patched up the hole just fine. So let's see what's down in this uh, doorway here. Oh, this is where we had the uh, the fight with the uh, with uh, the Moogles helping us out. So why did a uh, it take the guards so long to find Terra if uh, they were like literally right there. Ah, eh, whatever. And here, it's where the Moogles live. Oh, they were really close by. So uh, let's, yeah, all the Moogles, they all basically just say Kupo. But this one is Kupo. Poo! This one's Mog right here, he's the leader. Thanks for your help, guys. 
We're still in your debt, Moogles. And in this treasure chest, we are not going to open this one yet. This is one of those uh, cases where the treasure will become something better much later in the game. It'll be a little while still. But right now it contains a Rune Edge, which is a sword that, it's a decent weapon that uses MP to increase its attack power. I believe it's like it does like a critical hit every time as long as you have MP to uh, feed into it. But, you know, we don't really need to worry about that, so... We got so many other ways to defeat enemies. So let's continue onward. Yeah, we're pretty much just about done with... With the uh, current... Uh, scenario, I may as well just show this fight. We got some Vapor Rides and... Terra, you know what? I don't even care if Bannon fights. You know, that's this is how little I care about these guys. So yeah, we take out the Vapor Rides just fine. But yeah, this scenario is pretty much just about over already. It's uh, the shortest of the three. Yeah, again, these treasure chests are still the same as before. It's still quite a ways away before they upgrade into something better. And we got some Repo Mans and a Vaporite, whatever. You want Bannon fight? I want you to take out just one enemy. There we go. Feel the Wrath of the Punisher. It would've been funny if Bannon had gained a level from that one, but oh well. Again, that one, like I got like a Phoenix down up there still, but that becomes something better later. Save point if you need it, which I don't think I need to. They're just more worthless jobbers. And some rare wet. I still can't say that right. Were rats. Were rats. What do you mean you can't tell what I'm saying? Alright, well anyway, we're back in the old man's house here. This is pretty much where the scenario ends. If you're uh, planning on sharing equipment amongst your other groups, you can choose to uh, unequip things from your current party members and it'll wind up in the inventory for the other scenarios. So it's kind of, uh, it's, you know, all the weapons go up into the cloud and everybody can access it. Go for this door and the scenario will end. And it's Arvis, that's the old man's name. Bannon, King Agur, and Terra. Arvis, what's happening here in Narsh? The town's neutral. I've tried to get the people to side with the returners, but... Anyway, why on earth have you come here? I wonder if Arvis was originally intended to be playable. I don't know, his sprite looks like it's a little bit more unique than uh, your average citizens. First, how are your people doing? They all went slightly berserk when the Asper was discovered. Okay. Bannon, what's, what's that look for? We believe this young woman is our only hope of reaching out to that Asper. I'm going to stare into her eyes. Peer into her soul and will my desire into her, or something like that, I don't know. My people are dying to know what the Asper looks like. Maybe Terra can help restore some order to our town. Oh, uh, Megger. That Asper is either going to save us or dig us an early grave. Well, that's an ominous note to uh, end the scenario off on. So now we get to choose another scenario. Come on! So next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy VI, which scenario will we choose next? Will we go with Lox and see what's happening in South Figaro? Or will we go to Sabin and see how he fares after losing his little brief skirmish with Ultros on the Let River? This has been Phoenix Down, and I will see you guys next time.